Okay, next we have the preview of summer 2020 learning, Dr. Swift. Very good. Well, trustees, you know that we said clearly from the beginning that we would need to be busy all summer to help our students because we know if any child, think about it, if any child were absent from school for 12 weeks, we would wrap around that child with all sorts of supports to help them get caught up from school. And certainly our students have not been absent from school for 12 weeks, but certainly there have been interruptions and disruptions. So we made an early decision that we would do robust summer programming and that it would all be free. And then our door would be wide open for participation. So trustees, Miss Linden took that charge and our teachers are doing an incredible job of designing a summer program. Uh, remember that Trustee Nelson said something to me one day and you guys make remarks all the time and you don't know what a difference that makes in our planning. But he, but he said something like, let's make sure that it doesn't feel punitive. And that was just an insightful reminder to me. And I want you to watch this evening for how Ms. Linden and the teaching team have designed summer learning so that it is going to be great adventures at elementary school and learning challenges at middle school. And it's all academic. Uh, and yet very creatively put together in a, in a system where students can badge. And we've asked our partner coordinator, Nancy Shore, to help us to find cool, um, cool prizes that kids can win when they badge. Uh, just lots of great ideas going here for summer school. Our second worry, besides um, getting the door wide open, making sure that it looked fun and interesting and not like, you know, a punishment. Our third area of concern was our teachers have had a very exhausting nine weeks, as have all of us, and we were worried about staffing, and Ms. Linden will highlight it, but she put out word yesterday, and we have had overwhelming positive response from teachers that they want to be on the front line uh, during July this year to help our students continue their learning and continue their connections. So I know Ms. Linden is gonna share her screen and walk us through all of the summer school information. Then we'll have time for your questions. And trustees, I want you uh, to know that we are planning a summer school um, town hall, a summer learning town hall for next Thursday, a week from tomorrow. And then our portal opens on Friday uh, the 22nd. And so anyone and everyone is welcome to enroll your student. And uh, Ms. Linden, thank you. We're ready to hear from you. There she thank is. Thank you so much. It's great to be here with you. Uh, I just need to share that this connection has been a little funky here a couple of times. So if I, if I drop out for some reason, I will come back just as soon as possible. But trustees, President Johnson, Superintendent Swift, it's a pleasure to be here to share summer learning with you. And I have to tell you my great honor to share the work of so many incredible teachers, teacher leaders, and principals in redesigning these programs from young fives all the way through grade 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump into a very quick presentation. These are just a few slides, but the real meat of this is gonna be the website tour that I will take you on next, okay? So here we go. Uh, every single summer learning program has been re-envisioned, um, partly because we are online and also because we're opening the doors wide as Dr. Swift has shared. So seeking ways to make these programs fun, engaging, while being academically focused on building on foundational skills. Our goal is to make sure that our students are well prepared for the fall and they feel confident when they come back in the fall. A big part of our focus has been on making these programs as culturally relevant as possible. 
So these programs have a lot of choice. They have a lot of varied interest. There is some flexibility in there for families and for children, which we felt was really important when it came to access. And there is a lot of synchronous and real-time teacher-student connection and interaction time in all of these programs, which we're really, really proud of. Each of these programs has social-emotional connections and learning embedded and integrated because we know that particularly in an online setting, those personal connections can sometimes be difficult, particularly when you're connecting with the teacher that you didn't previously have a relationship with. So that's a big part of the design. Another really big piece, and this is one way that we make it interesting and engaging, is that we use real world context so that the students can, can connect the learning to something relevant. And should the board approve, uh, we would be using Schoology as the learning management system. There we go. So here's a small taste. Dr. Swift mentioned adventure games. This is the redesign of our elementary program. This is the brainchild of some really smart individuals, Miss Erica Hatt, Tony Stamm, Angela Black, who is a teacher at Wines, and Bernard Bell, who is a teacher at Bryant. Angela and Bernard are the principals of the summer program, and Erica and Tony are the designers, the curriculum coordinators who helped with all the redesign. So um, great brains working together here, in addition to Joanna Johnson, our Title I coordinator, and Cheryl Call, our English language learning coordinator. Um, some really smart individuals with equity at the heart of all they do. So I'm really proud of this. The elementary program adventure games are week-long adventures where students every day can complete tasks and earn badges. So they've modeled this in a way of gamification so the students can build and get to the next level and they're encouraged every day to do the next thing. And these are just an example of some of the badges that our students can earn. So we'll see a little more when we go to the website. The middle school summer challenge is three weeks and three amazing challenges. So this young woman is Anna Gonzalez. Anna is the English language teacher at Scarlet. She's also one of the designers, the leads of this program. And I am gonna play just a little bit, if you will indulge me, of one of the challenge launches. Hello, Ann Arbor Public Schools. I am Ms. Gonzalez from Scarlet Middle School, and I'm here to bring you your first summer challenge. This challenge begins with a story. The other day I was making breakfast when I ran out of bananas, and I thought, no big deal, I'll just go to Meyer. And then I remembered I needed a face mask. In case you're unaware, Governor Gretchen Whitmer extended the stay-at-home order on April 24th, 2020, until May 15th, 2020. With this order, she required that anyone who entered a public enclosed space wear a face covering or a face mask. So I needed a face mask. So I decided to Google some solutions and some of the things I found were a little weird. For example, this little girl who wanted to take her dog on a walk decided to put on a stormtrooper mask. Now, I'm not a Star Wars expert, but I don't think stormtroopers own dogs. But at least she had a dog. This guy, on the other hand, abandoned the dog completely and decided to wear the cone of shame. Maybe it was effective, but not my style. This guy decided to go low tech and use a coffee filter. Get it? Coffee? <coughs> Maybe you're not into puns. This couple, on the other hand, found love in a hopeless place. This man was able to take his newfound love out on a date in a bubble. Who said romance was dead? Some companies have found more sustainable ways of creating face masks by recycling aprons or pillowcases. Even a scuba diving team based out of California has been collecting plastic water bottles to create face masks out of the recycled plastic. How cool is that? However, when you go on their website, there's a big disclaimer that says shipping will take up to six weeks. I don't have that kind of time. This is where you come in. Your task is to create a face mask. Your face mask must cover the face and nose. It must also have a filter and a place for a filter. 
It should also be able to adjust to fit anyone in your household. It should fit comfortably and securely. Last but not least, you must use objects within your own household. Good luck. We believe in you. So I'll pause there. You get the flavor. Uh, every day the challenge gets complicated by some new development that students then have to go back and redesign and problem solve again. And so the goal of this is for students to use their mathematics, to use their speaking, their listening, their writing skills, their presentation skills, and to problem solve together in small group. So this launch is just a three and a half minute video launch. Following this, the teachers move into some guided um, inquiry with students every day to help walk them through the challenge. Um, let's move to the high school. We, we have some really exciting expanded high school options. As Dr. Swift mentioned, free access to a wide range of support, supports for students. We have credit recovery always available to students. We're increasing that availability. We also know that some students will have incompletes after this semester. And so we're helping those students to earn course credit and complete those courses this summer. We're, we're offering free access to A2 Virtual. We will talk a little bit more about those courses in a minute. We have always had strong programs to build bridges for incoming ninth graders and our English learners. Those programs will continue and be expanded. And we have, of course, SAT supports for our incoming 11th graders. We wanna make sure those programs are robust and that those continue even online. Here's some exciting news also. On the special education side, summer learning opportunities will look a little bit different in some really exciting ways. First of all, ESY will continue. This is a program that is addressing needs that are written into the IEP. It is a program designed to support students who will see significant regression over breaks. That program will continue um, in the online setting. PK through 12, we're proud of that work and the transition that's been done with that to make it exciting and engaging for students. We offer Project READ programming over the last year or two. This program is, is expanded. It is an intensive reading program for students who are significantly um, below grade level in reading. And it is for kindergarten through eighth grade students. That program will be available online. And here's the new piece that is really exciting. The SISS Summer Academy is in its first summer. So this program is intended for all students who have an IEP to be able to get supports this summer to help them with their literacy, math skills, language speech skills, social skills, fine motor skills, and other supports. And any student with an IEP may participate. And so we just want to thank our ADs, Mary Weezy, Tracy Johnson, Julianne Muir. We got to thank uh, Dr. Fedition for her leadership in this and all of the service providers who have volunteered to serve this summer. It is an amazing program. So ready to head to the website? Let's check it out. So we've worked pretty hard this summer. I want to show you where to get to summer programming. This will be moved to the headline after today, but right now if you're, you're a family member, you go to our website, a2schools.org, you click on students and families, and you go all the way to the bottom, and you click on summer school. Can you all see that okay? It's coming through, okay. So here's the landing page. We have different places for families to go based on need. So our special education programs are available right here on the landing page. Let's pop in there and we'll show you what, what the website looks like. So this is our ESY program. Here you're gonna find a program description if you wanna know a little bit more about it. You'll see the learning targets, very clearly the program dates laid out for you, the days of the week and the times that that program runs. You'll also see how to enroll if you're invited to that program. And you'll see a little more about parent orientation. So we're proud of that. Our Project READ program is available here. So you'll see that program description, the learning targets, the times of that program and dates so that families can plan accordingly and how to enroll. And the very newest addition, the Summer Academy. So here uh, is the definition of that program. You're gonna see those dates and times. 
And beginning May 22nd, the enrollment link here will be live. So we invite families to come back at that time and go ahead and sign up for the pieces and the elements that your child needs. And we are happy to serve in this manner. Really proud of that work. The English learner programs, these are gonna look familiar to you. We have run the Summer English as a Second Language Academy, better known as CESLA. It has been housed inside Scarlet for a number of years. Now it's completely online. So the CESLA program is for students in fourth through eighth grades. It is really designed to support those students in developing math and literacy skills, those academic vocabulary pieces that can be challenging for English learners. It's also really heavy on building relationships and making sure there's a network of supports for students. So those dates happen a little bit earlier. It gives students a time to participate in more than one summer program if they would like. You see a little sample of the schedule that students will go through. And again, enrollment in that program is by invitation. In addition, we have an EL Bridge program. This is for students who are exiting eighth grade and getting ready to be ninth graders this fall. And similar goals to the CESLA program, we really want to make sure our students who are newcomers, who are English learners, um, understand how to navigate high school, have the supports they need to strengthen their language skills in core areas like ELA and mathematics, how to engage in clubs, how to be a real part of the community, and to not let um, English language be a barrier for them. So we're proud of those two programs. And then we'll hop into elementary. So here you're gonna find the summer adventure games and to help our English learner families, we have that CESLA program linked also here. So it's available in multiple places. Um, we never want folks to go uh, get lost searching for what they need. So here's a description of adventure games. These games are project-based, interest-based. They incorporate and integrate reading, writing, math, science, social studies, all in one project. So the students can earn their badges by completing each component of these adventures. It is really exciting. So soon we will have the focus areas for each of these weeks clearly identified. Families may enroll in one week or they may enroll in all four based on the interests of their children. So this website will be updated over the next few days. But again, I cannot say enough about the creators of this program and how hard they work to re-envision this in a gamification style. It is really, really exciting. So here you'll find the application for enrollment. I'll give you a little sense of what the enrollment form looks like. So this is how families will enroll. It's that easy. Um, they just take a peek here. They enter their children's name. They choose which week. And again, they can do all four if they would like. And all that pertinent information that we need. And then they click submit. So it's a quick enrollment process and um, gets them connected to some really cool things. So we'll head back and let's hop into middle school. We're almost there, trustees. So our middle school program is Challenges. This is a three week challenge program. Here students enroll for all three weeks. There's one enrollment, three weeks of Challenges. The goals here are to strengthen student skills in pre-algebra. This is a real concern we know for families that students are prepared for, for the challenges that are ahead. And many parents are concerned particularly about mathematics. So we wanted to make sure we emphasize that in the middle program. So parents can, can um, rest assured that students are gonna be working on variable scale factors, ratios, and really early algebraic foundational skills. And then in literacy, this is really about strengthening every part of being a literate individual, from speaking to writing to, um, to reading. This program runs the 13th through the 30th. It is a Monday through Thursday, very similar. Most of that synchronous stuff happens in the morning, but students can do their asynchronous things like getting onto Dreambox to practice their personal math at any time. And again, if families would like to enroll, they simply click on the enrollment form. And you'll see that looks very similar to the elementary program. And we have, we've already covered CESLA. We haven't talked about SLA. Um, this is the Scarlet Learning Academy. It's a three-week program. It is grant funded with Title I dollars. 
It is for targeted students who need support in math and literacy. It runs June 22nd through the 10th, and it is by invitation only. It's a long running program as well. Um, so students will be invited and parents would receive an email with registration information. But we wanted to have all this available to families in one place. We're really, really proud of this. I really can't go past the fact that Ryan Supal, um, Supal, sorry, is our IB coordinator at Scarlet, and he is the SLA principal. Really proud of the re-envisioning of that program. And I was remiss in not speaking about the Cessla principal, who you may know, Evelyn Doherty. Evelyn is a, a teacher as well. She is incredible, and she is the, SL, the Cessla principal, excuse me, doing some really amazing work in the transitioning of these programs to an online platform. We're really, really proud of them. The middle school challenge, I did not speak to our principal, Sarah Andrew Vaughn, so I have to back up and really recognize Sarah. She is also a teacher at Scarlet. Uh, she has stepped into this role as principal under the support of Mike Summerton, who we all know as an assistant principal at Huron. And she has had the help of Jennifer Colby and Anna Gonzalez, who starred in that video that you saw earlier. They have been um, really at the heart of designing those summer challenges. They have done an incredible job. So I'm so proud of them. And now I apologize, we can hop a little forward here. Incoming ninth graders, those who are moving into ninth, have a couple of specialized programs of support for targeted students. We can't skip talking about the academic youth program. This is for students who are currently enrolled in Math 8. So they're students who are not um, in an algebra class as middle schoolers. So they will take algebra for the first time as ninth graders. And so this program is about supporting their skills, not only in mathematics, that they are successful in Algebra 1, but also to help them um, build leadership skills, to make sure they have personal connections at the high school, that they have peer groups they're connected to, that they can self-advocate, and they feel empowered at the high school. So any student who's enrolled in Math 8 is, is targeted for this. We want to make sure they are successful in Algebra 1, because that is, um, according to many, many graduation uh, research studies, a gateway toward um, either graduating or not graduating. So we want to make sure that students are successful in that course so they're ready for the very next pieces. We're proud of that program as well, and it's been in effect for a few years. We also have EL Summer Bridge. This program we talked about when we clicked on the English Learner Support, so I won't review that again. Both those programs are incredible. Um, Dr. Amina Allen is the principal of both. She runs those programs, and she is the assistant principal at Skyline, and I think you know her well. Last, we will hop into high school. So we arranged the high school landing page to be really user-friendly. We wanted families and students who needed to access supports to be able to find them quickly. So we have uh, questions here to guide where, where families and students may click. So if a family or a student is looking to recover credit or transition an incomplete to a complete for courses, they would click on this program, which is the AAPS High School Summer Program. This program is targeted and directed to credit recovery and filling gaps and in completes transitioning any incomplete courses to completion. This program, along with most of the others, um, runs through the month of July, so June 29th through July 31st. In this program, the students will get a ton of support. Um, we wanna make sure they're each connected to an adult and that they have that personal connection. So Mike Summerton and Dan Hilliard are the principals of this program. And part of the induction into this program is a one-on-one -on -one meeting where a teacher talks with the student about their goals, what they're trying to accomplish, and what their needs are. We're really, really proud of the personal connections that happen here. So there's a little bit about a daily schedule. Um, on the SEL side, our principals, uh, Mike Summerton and Dan Hilliard, are deeply committed to equity and social-emotional connections. They have created and will continue throughout the program 
to send a daily video welcome to all of the students in the program, encouraging them to keep going, inviting them to connect, and welcoming them every single day into that virtual space. So we're proud of those connections that the principals are sharing. Those connections with students, as I talked about, are here. So you can see a little more of those on our website. Connecting with parents is also really important, particularly in the high school program, where, where oftentimes families aren't as engaged as they are when their kids are much younger. So that's a really big part of this program as well in multiple ways that, that the high school teams will engage. So we mentioned Mike Summerton, Dan Hilliard, and Amina Allen are the principals that are serving these amazing high school programs. And if you're looking to raise your GPA, improve your grade, or to take a class for the first time, you're gonna head over here to A2 Virtual. And here you'll see a welcome message about the summer term. This piece about summer 2020, no cost options to retake any course that students were engaged in during the COVID closure. So students may retake any one of their scheduled trimester three or semester two courses free of charge. We're really proud of that. We thank the board and Dr. Swift for the support in making that available to students. It's really important. A um, little bit of guidelines for that. We like to share right up front with everybody what the window is for the course. We caution uh, students also, it's important to know that when you're taking a virtual course, your investment is about 15 hours a week. And so students need to set that time aside and make that commitment about 15 hours a week. Um, there is a drop period. So if students were to become engaged and find it's too overwhelming, they, they can choose to drop. We hope they do not. Um, but after that time, students must complete the course and it is for a grade. So we want to make sure throughout this process, whomever is enrolling, that we are connected to students, that we're there encouraging them. Each of them is connected to a teacher and that teacher will make contact and continue to encourage and support students in completing their courses. There are also a variety of other courses that are offered to students at a far reduced cost. Each of the courses that we offer through A2 Virtual and Michigan Virtual are reduced by $100 per course, which is nearly half. So we're proud of that too. These are for students who wanna take a course to get ahead, maybe get an elective out of the way so that they can take a different one when they come back to school. Um, so that piece is available here. And there's a lot more information at this website. I know I'm just skimming the surface with you, but I invite you to check it out. And then another piece that we're excited about is the SAT prep. So there are two versions of this program I'll talk to with you about. The first is prep for all. So every single incoming 11th grader, and this is the class of 2022, will be engaged in SAT prep. So our SAT prep coaches will be working with every student to make sure that their college board accounts, where their pre-SAT and practice test scores exist, are linked to the Khan Academy practice lessons and instruction. That piece is really important because it is customized to support the needs of each student. So whichever areas are my deficit areas, that's the assistance I'm going to get in my customized pathway. They will also receive personalized one-on-one -on -one meetings with an SAT coach when they take the practice test to review the results with them, give them tips and pointers, and encourage them in the next phase of their practice. So we're proud of that for every 11th grader. In addition, what we know from statistics and the studies around um, progressions with SAT, that students whose score ranges are between 800 and 1,000 benefit enormously from some one-on-one -on -one or teacher group support. And so we've designed a course that is credit bearing, it's, it's the equivalent of, of an elective. What students can do in this program is enroll in an SAT prep course. That means they're connected daily, they're supported through, through um, a teacher with their lessons, making sure they go through each piece of this and they strengthen the components of their SAT prep that are unique to them. Um, here's the results of a program like that. And this is one reason we're pretty encouraged to keep it going. Students who participate in this program whose scores are between 800 and 1,000 see on average 150 points improvement. 
after having completed the program. And we all I know are committed to seeing our students achieve their career, their college goals, their life goals. This is an important step in that, that they all have the options that they need. So we're proud of this. We will be targeting our students in that range so that we can um, support their growth. And that program again is supported by Dr. Mina Allen. And that runs July 6th through the 30th and it's a Monday through Thursday program. So trustees, I hope that you are as excited as I am. I think the AAPS summer program and this menu is one of the best I've ever seen. And I cannot say enough about the wonderful people who are supporting and building this program. I created a little thank you document so you could see all the people that have been engaged in this program. What I think is really astounding and uh, I think a tribute to all of the incredible people in our district and the leadership that occurs outside of official titles. You will see that so many of the people serving in these programs as administrators and principals are current teachers in the Ann Arbor Public Schools who have stepped up to lead this summer. So thank you to all of these amazing people. We are grateful to all of you for all of your work. And I would be remiss if I did not thank my partner, Heather Kalstrom, um, Kevin Carr, who is here uh, observing, he's in the waiting room listening to it all. He's my partner with Teaching and Learning. Julie Wallstra, who has been uh, a maestro with PowerSchool and helping us figure out how to enroll hundreds of students in a summer program. James Markham on their team, who is tireless in his support of our teachers and all of us. And of course, our office professionals who are helping us figure it all out, Rhonda Goodman and Aileen Sampson. Thank you to all of Teaching and Learning Council and our IT team for all of their summer work. We appreciate you. President Johnson, before um, we go to questions, I just wanted to share that I was in a meeting of superintendents not long ago and I asked the question about summer school and Certainly we understand that districts are overwhelmed right now and staffs are overwhelmed, but I was shocked that every other district in the room either planned on doing a very minimal approach to summer school or were considering canceling their summer programs this year because of all the COVID crisis. So I, I just want to share how much I appreciate that Ms. Linden took the challenge and I appreciate that our teams are doing the work so that in Ann Arbor, again, in this example, we are a step above the others. And I just wish we could, in fact, I launched the idea the other day, I wish we could welcome students from everywhere, uh, just because I know that students need support right now. But at any rate, um, I'm proud, especially in this environment, to be able to offer this program. And I thank you, trustees, for your support. Thank you so much, Ms. Linden. Thank you, everyone involved. I love the credits at the end. That reminded me of watching a movie. And, and watching <laughs> <laughs>